This is about you guys. Sorry to cut this hour short, but we're going to get busy talking about business. Starting one, running one. We want to hear from you. The email address, feedback at foxbusiness.com. Also, 877-249-9626. That is the phone number. Let's get right to it. We also have a great panel to answer your questions about business. Let's meet everybody right now. Small business consultant Danny Babb and John Rutledge of Rutledge Capital Partners. Money coach Lynette Califani-Cox and the CEO and founder of Overstock.com, Patrick Byrne. And our first caller is Karen, and she joins us from Idaho. Go for it, Karen. You're on. Hi, thanks so much for taking my call. Um, my question is, what um, in, the, in the stimulus package, what is there to benefit small businesses? Uh, I have a small business that's been open for a year, and it's doing, doing well, but I have, um, I need, we're expanding, I need equipment, I have run up all my personal credit lines, and um, I'm just, I'm looking to see what kind of assistance there is, and... Um, Sounds like Danny may be able to help you. Yeah, I, I can help you. Uh, first of all, there's not something specific in the stimulus package unless you're in the energy sector. But what there is is another $700 million for loans and funding. So if you are looking for, um, for specific uh, items for your business, I would check out the Microloan 7M. Go to a big bank, fill out the application, and it takes about 36 hours to find out if you're approved. And you can get up to $35,000 for inventory supplies and furniture, and then you can get an express loan for up to 350000 and that may actually increase as a result of the stimulus package to half a million. Patrick, as a, as a business owner and operator, how much do you look to the government for help? <laughs> we look not at all. <laughs> we look not at all. I can't, I, no, short answer is we look not at all. Just how, how much they intervene in your pay, business through taxes. The, and they, I want them to pave the roads, have a police force. That's what I want out of them. Uh, make sure the, the UPS trucks can drive on the road. But no, we're not looking to them for any assistance. You need to register as a bank. <laughs> yeah, well, I've thought about that. <laughs> Actually, uh, let's move on to another call. Thane from Oklahoma is on the line. Thane, ask away. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. My question is kind of along the, the lines of the previous caller, except for I am looking for government help. Um, <laughs> are there any programs set up to fund or partially fund minority business enterprises that are in the green job category? And if so, who specifically do I contact? Contact the, the, yeah, small, the small Business, business Administration. administration. Yeah. yeah, that's really where you should, should start, the SBA, the Small Business Administration. But listen, let me tell you something about uh, relying solely on the government for loans. I think it's a big mistake for entrepreneurs or would-be small business owners. Sometimes maybe you don't need that kind of capital. Maybe you can barter. Maybe you can get, um, you know, trade deals with your vendors or suppliers. Maybe you can lease equipment as opposed to purchasing it outright. So I think sometimes some of us think, oh, I need, you know, a, a big cash infusion, a big loan in order to finance our operations. That may not be the case in all situations. May I tell you, I'm sorry, please go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, depending upon how much money you need, you may just be able to do what I've done many times as a business, and that's sell what's in your closet. So. There's a, there is within the small business program a minority and women-owned business program uh, where they'll, they'll give you an, a special hard look. But I have, for example, a lady friend in New York who was running a restaurant when 9-11 happened. Of course, everything cratered, and FEMA came in with all these emergency loans. And they were so convinced that we needed these. And they went and applied, and they thought it was going to save them. And they were very happy until it dragged on, and it dragged on for so long, they eventually, did, and it was such a nightmare to deal with FEMA, they eventually canceled their subscription, I mean, canceled their, their, their uh, uh, push to try to get it, and they had to lay off a couple people, they tightened their belt, and they made it through, and they came out swimmingly, but without any FEMA help, because it turned out to be such a nightmare to deal with FEMA. Yeah, running, running a business is a guerrilla war. You have to fight it every dollar, one dollar at a time. Sometimes you can get financing from the company that's trying to sell you the stuff that you that's think right. you need to buy. Because vendor financing works through the mothership of the company who's selling. They will have access to credit, and they'll pipeline it through to you, whether it's a Cisco for a router or, any, or, or many other businesses. If you're looking for capital assets, there's a little tax help in the plan, but you can get financing from the seller. Mm -hmm. Guys. 
great insight all the way around. And we're going to get more questions, more answers for you. If you have to run out, keep listening to us on, uh, uh, what is it, Sirius Channel 145 and XM 168. Right back with more of your questions about running a business, starting one. We have a panel that is fired up mm -hmm. to tell you everything you need to know. That's straight ahead. back the Fox Business Network we're here for you to take your questions and answer them about starting a business running one just taking charge of your own situation I'm Dega McDowell along with Adam Shapiro 877-249-9626 or feedback at foxbusiness.com is the email that's how you can get your questions to us right now Bobby from North Carolina writes are there any new taxes that small businesses need to be worried about and I would imagine <laughs> this Congress is probably looking at lots of new taxes John well yeah, the, the new tax code is written to punish anyone who actually likes to work or invest <laughs> in anything. Make money. Uh, it's, it's just obscene. The income tax rate, the capital gains rate, the dividend tax rate, the tax on doing business in other countries. If, you, if, it, if it walks or swims or flies, you're gonna, they're going to try and tax it. The good thing is some guys in Congress are pushing back, and it may not all go through, which would be great. That might be why the stock market's a little bit live now. Well, and President Obama seemed to be giving a little bit this past week, talking to the business owners, Patrick, and saying, at least mentioning cutting the corporate tax rate, which, again, we're talking about smaller businesses, which um, many would be taxed at your personal income tax rate. But I wanted to know, <coughs> should you take any heart from that? Well, uh, we do have the second highest corporate tax in the world that's not making that that hurts American competitiveness. We have to get the money from somewhere. I'm a disciple of Friedman's. I think they ought to just rip up Milton Friedman's. They ought to just rip up this whole system, go to a flat tax, and if they worry about the regressivity of that, couple it with a, a, a negative tax like we have with our earned income tax credit. And they should get, there's so much economic activity that gets wasted as people bend and contort and try and tax mm -hmm. avoidance. Six million Americans are members of limited partnerships through for real estate and other ventures and uh, almost all small businesses run through either S corps or proprietorships which are taxed at the top rate mm -hmm. yeah it, oh, here's one thing you might want to take a look at to minimize your taxes all right um, for one thing at, go to the irs.gov look at the the document that says do I have a contractor or do I have an employee there a lot of small business owners don't even realize that some of their employees are could really be classified as contractors if that's the case your tax burden goes down that's something I recommend every small business and owner the regulatory look at. baggage as well will drop if you can do Absolutely. that right? and I should, on, wait on the phone we want to get as many yeah. questions in here Ken is from Florida and he's calling in Ken go ahead is Ken there All these people that have our money um, our trillion dollars, for instance, in China, mm -hmm. shouldn't they buy something from us? And if y'all don't have the answer, I might. Okay, well, let's <laughs> ask, our, ask our panel. That's a big picture question. That's a jump ball. Who wants to take it? Well, they, they got $2 trillion that they already hold in dollar securities, whether it's treasury bills or mortgage securities or they agencies. They bought our debt. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, they, it's not possible, for their own reasons, it's not possible for them to sell that. So the risk of them going away is zero, and uh, they're, so they're already, uh, they're already shopping here, and they're taking home buckets of paper. And remember that they got that because of how profig profligate we are. They got that $2 trillion because we bought their sneakers and their video screens and such, and we didn't produce anything that they or anyone else around the world wanted uh, that they could use those dollars with. So those are our IOUs. So let's not be mad at them. Let's be mad at our profligacy. It's codependency. I said that earlier. Yeah. It's a, we were each reliant on one another for, for very different you know, things. Just in defense of the American consumer, though, I mean, the willingness of the American consumer, as bad as it is to take on this kind of debt, propelled millions of people worldwide out of poverty. And as we beat up, you know, Americans are getting beat up, and they forget that all those people in India and all those people in China and all those people in Brazil who are now part of a middle class, it's because people in the United States took on debt. And back, and back to our real purpose, right. there's Get a it. bunch of ways to sell products to guys in foreign countries without killing yourself, no matter how big your business is. Yeah. On the Internet, and guess who's here? Patrick Byrne 
the CEO <laughs> of Overstock.com, dot com, internet company. We're already ready to make a deal. <laughs> yeah. We did a deal at the break. <laughs> hey, and about that, last week Mary called in from Arkansas. She's 70 years old. She makes a dipping sauce. We helped her set up a business. Mary, call in, give us your phone number. I've got orders for your product. Mm -hmm. Patrick wants to put it on Overstock.com. <laughs> right. Let's get this <laughs> no. thing going. You're getting go. older, Mary. <laughs> exactly. Or e right. email at feedback at foxbusiness.com to Mary. So you got the email address. You got the phone number. Call us. Email us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm Adam Shapiro, along with Dagan McDowell, and this is the Fox Business Network, also known as the Smell the Glove Tour. No, we were talking it's about Spinal <laughs> Tap. <laughs> we were talking about Spinal Tap in the break, but it's this, we're down, getting down to business. This is about your business, starting one, running one. We have these incredible people. Quickly, we want to rifle through these calls. Ray's on the line from Texas. Ray, go ahead. Oh, yes, hello, uh, and thanks for taking my call. Um, my wife and I, my wife is an administrator, and I'm a nurse, and we were looking at opening a, an assisted living, a small assisted living facility. Uh, that's a community for retired uh, citizens. Mm -hmm. And we were wondering, we've gotten some feedback from some private investors, but in this market here, is it wise for us to seek out private investors? The banks are kind of tight. Uh, not kind of, uh, very tight. Uh, <laughs> it's not <laughs> should, funny, but... Yeah, exactly. Should we try to wait for... Or, or maybe should we just kind of put off our whole idea until this economic recession type thing is just completely over with or or met its bottom or or maxed out or, uh, or whatever. Ray, Ray, you and your wife and I are all sitting here dying of old age. No, no, waiting, <laughs> waiting is for tourists. It's a great idea. It's one where the regulators are going to be climbing up your legs, so you've got to watch out for, mm -hmm. for that. But uh, some of the small business money Danny's talking about might help you there because you're going to need equipment and beds and, and, uh, and so forth. But you're going to ride the baby boom right, uh, right out. Yeah, so that's the key. And if you're helping a distressed community, there's a specific loan for you called Community Express. So check it out. Oh, okay. Community oh. Express. Mm -hmm. Say that slowly. Community <laughs> Express. Hey, Tom from Nevada has a question about, uh, is it about financing a green business, Tom? Yes, uh, I just wanted to say good morning to all of you, and I want to say that you all glow with brilliance and look good, too. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I'm so, in the process of uh, starting a green energy leasing company and, uh, for small wind and solar PV electrical generation. A lot of people are interested in getting off the grid, and with net metering, it has a lot of appeal. Uh, I know there's tax credits and all of that, and uh, if a person could... Uh, get their piece of equipment in to supply their own energy and uh, with all the tax credits and then lease the difference so that, in effect, rather than giving the money to the power company every month, they could lease this, make the payment after a mm -hmm. ROI, a return on investment of three years or whatever, uh, payback period. Uh, it would then be all bottom-line profit. And I just wondered what your take would be on that. Lynette's nodding her head. Well, uh, leaseback operations common, but I can't say that it'd be all profit because remember, you still got everything else in that business to run. The equipment, that's one side of the business, but what about the salaries? What about the overhead for other expenses, uh, et cetera? Um, I would say look into it, though, and I would start with the federal government because clearly there is a push to um, make all of us move towards a more greener, environmentally sound uh, economy. Check out the CDC 504 grant online. CDC 504 grant. Patrick? Well, you were sitting you're, very no, you're both very knowledgeable. Just I don't think that the arbitrage is yet there between buying dirty energy and clean energy. The tax credits and such aren't enough that the spread is enough to build a business off, is my impression so far. Uh, so that means I don't think there's, there's probably enough juice in that, in that lemon. Just hate to be a Debbie Downer. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a, again, all the way around, one more uh, on the phone. Michael from Florida has a question. Michael, go ahead. Yes, uh, I have a, a fishing vessel. I tried to get the uh, business started up, and the price of fuel spiked up over double of what I was normally paying. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering, uh, under the circumstances, uh, everybody's claiming it's the mortgage industry and toxic assets. I think the real problem was the cost of fuel destroyed many businesses across the country, a bit into your monthly income, mm 
Mm -hmm. the, the price of insurance uh, also doubled where I live, and that raised my monthly payments. So now my mortgage is in trouble. My business can't function because I can't buy fuel, and I, I, my pocket was drained. And I was wondering if the government has anything in mind for businesses like ours that are so dependent mm -hmm. on uh, the cost of fuel and uh, insurance and what have you in this new so-called stimulus package. John Rutledge, again, we've got a big energy. They're trying yeah. to put a big energy policy in place, but that doesn't really help the business owner at this point. No, it doesn't, Michael. In fact, this thing they call cap and trade is going to make your energy costs go up, not go down. It's terrible. Right now, the world stopped growing. Nobody's buying gas, so prices have come back down. They're going to go back up. So I think this problem is going to get worse, not uh, better. And nothing I see coming out of the government to fix it. I think you're going to have to tackle each one of these problems individually. You have a mortgage problem, you're going to have to tackle that individually. You've got a small business problem. Um, for your particular thing, if you want a 10-year loan, check out the 7A loan. That's the closest thing I can think of that will come to government assistance that might help you. Patrick, I want you want to add anything before we go? <clears throat> sure. The, uh, when you run a fishing boat, a great deal of your costs are fuel. And so your business is going to get more expensive to run when we have spikes to $150 in oil. Okay. It's not that simple. Well, it was great to see you. It was great to see everybody. Adam, you want to start thanking these fine people? That's all the time we're going to have for this Saturday. But Lynette, Patrick, Danny, and John, it was great to have you here. And you're going to be back next week, so more questions for small business owners. But let's just say that. This is about encouraging you, getting you fired up to do your own thing. Forget the government. Don't worry about it. We can fuss and moan about what Washington is doing all day long. But we're here to answer your questions and get you fired up about starting a business and running one right here on Fox Business. We will see you come Monday morning. Take care.